Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here and welcome to another sculpting video. In this one, Halloween is coming early again because I'll be sculpting a groundskeeper slash grave digger type character. You know that guy in scary movies that gets like two minutes of screen time that's always lurking in the background following the main characters and he looks like he hasn't bathed in 10 years and has never seen a toothbrush? That's the guy we're making. Now aside from this being a really random idea, he actually ends up being one of my most detailed sculptures that I've done so far on YouTube. I gave him a little environment, a couple of props, and a whole lot of hours of my life. So with all that said, if you'd like to see me sculpt this guy, then let's get started. So when I was thinking about how I wanted this guy to look, I wanted him to have really long skinny legs and in order to do that I have to put him on a base and I'm just using one of these nice little wooden plaques from the craft store. I drilled two holes the same size as the bamboo skewers that I just inserted and now I am shaping out the top of his torso and his shoulders out of aluminum wire and then wrapping it around the bamboo skewers to secure them. And then as always, all of the materials and tools that I use in this video are listed in the description box below, along with my affiliate links if you want to purchase anything. Now I'm just bulking out his torso with some aluminum foil. Hey Reynolds Wrap, how about a sponsorship? Now I'm just securing everything with some masking tape, and then we're going to go ahead and shape out the arms from another piece of aluminum wire, bend them so that they are the correct size trim them with some wire cutters and then attach them to the shoulders with some masking tape. Then once the armature is done, it's time to cover the entire thing in clay. We're using Super Sculpey Original this time. And I've been getting a lot of comments from people lately asking what determines the type of Super Sculpey I use for each sculpture. You know, sometimes I use medium blend, other times firm, and then other times just Super Sculpey Original, and honestly, 90% of my decision making process for this is based solely on what I have available at the time. Like, if I have to go to the store and get more Super Sculpey Original, and I have some firm sitting right in front of me, I'm gonna go ahead and use the firm. Um, as for other the other 10%, I do like to use the firmer variations for smaller pieces just because it's a little harder to smash while you're working with it, and the gray color of it makes it easier to see smaller details. Alright, now that the torso and legs are completely covered, I just added a bamboo skewer for the neck, and then I am adding some Super Sculpey to the base of that skewer to create the neck itself. And then I'm just adding them back to the base really quick, and we're going to roll out a snake of clay, roll it through my pasta maker vertically, and create the top of his pants with it. I just added it to the piece like so and then blended the bottom edge in with his legs. Now we're doing the front of his button down shirt that he will have. Then once everything's looking pretty good, we're just gonna give him a nice little belt just for another level of detail. Add some belt loops there. Very nice, very nice. And now for the belt buckle. This is just a tiny snake of clay. Now we're just gonna go in and nitpick everything a little bit with my explorer tool, and then we're gonna add some stitching to the belt. All right, and then moving on, we're just gonna add some wrinkles or folds to his shirt, like so. These are just snakes of clay that taper at one end that I am blending in with the rest of his chest. And once the wrinkles are done, we're just going to go ahead and give them some tiny little buttons. Then once those buttons are looking pretty good, we're just going to go in and add some wrinkles and folds to his pants. But being careful not to bulk out the legs too much because I still want them to be really skinny. Now for another added detail, I'm just going to shorten his pants a little bit, make them look like they're rolled up eventually, and we're going to see a good portion of his socks. I thought that would be a nice touch. Now we're just shaping out the shoes really quick, like so. I just do one on camera and then I finish the other one off camera. Now I'm just adding his sock. Then 
then once the other shoe and sock are on, we're just going to go in with our explorer tool and draw some lines on the socks. Now before I get any further on the figurine, I want to stop and start detailing the base. And normally when I use bases, I don't decorate them like this or, you know, sculpt over them. I just leave the little plaque showing and then I'll like stain it or whatever. But for this one, we're going to make it a little special and I'm going to sculpt him a mini environment, if you will. And I'm actually really happy that I did this because it adds so much to the figure. And I definitely want to do this more often. And as you saw there, I just covered the whole thing in clay, expanded the circumference of the plaque, and now I'm just going in with my tiny ball stylus to give it a nice grass texture. This took me, I think, like 30 minutes just to do this grass texture. Now once that texture is on, we're going to put a nice little stone pathway in, and I'm just cutting out this random shape here. And then I'm going to round the corners with my fingertips and then attach it to the base. And I'm just going to sort of interlock these stones into a path shape. And I really like how this turns out and I'm really happy that I did this. Now once all those stones are on, we're just gonna go in with our Explorer tool to create some little cracks here and there. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now we're just gonna go in and add some grass growing in between some of the stones. Just adding some more clay and texturing it with my tiny ball stylus. Once that base is pretty much done, we're just gonna go ahead and add our guy back in without smashing him completely. Then we're gonna add one more stone to a spot that I completely missed. Now as another added detail, I'm going to give this guy a nice little rickety fence on the base behind him and I'm just cutting out the shape of the fence boards like so and then poking two holes through the sides of them where I will eventually feed some wire. And then we're just repeating that process, it's just going to be a tiny fence just to get the point across. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a nice wood grain to each um, board like so and then I'm going to pre-bake the boards and then add the wire to connect them after they're baked but before I bake them I'm just gonna add half of a toothpick to the bottom of each one to help me stake them in later check them out all right while those are baking we're just gonna go ahead and detail his shoes now we're gonna add the tongues And then I'm just gonna go in there with my Explorer tool to add all of the nice shoe details. We're gonna give him some decent looking dress shoes. And then of course we have to add some shoelaces. Now we're just going to finish off the bottom of his pants and make them look like they're rolled up. After some finishing details, that's looking pretty good. Now for the next step, we're just going to give this guy a nice long overcoat. And to do that, I ran this clay through my pasta maker on the 4 setting. Just cutting it to size, and adding it to the figure, like so, and then we're going to finish it off with two more pieces in the front. Then before we go any further on the coat, we're just going to add a nice little collar to his button-down shirt. And now for the lapels on his jacket.
Now we're just gonna keep detailing the coat and give him some pockets and then at one point I put a big patch on his back and I have no idea where that footage went but there's the patch and I put it on just like the pockets. Now we're just going in with our explorer tool to add some seams then make some buttons for the coat. Now it's time to finish off that fence before we bake this guy for the first time. And I'm just sort of stringing the boards onto some floral wire like so, making sure everything's nice and secure, adding some bacon bond for added reinforcement, and then poking them into the base like so. And that looked really good. I was really happy with how the fence turned out. And he's ready for his first bake. And then once he's baked and completely cooled down, it's time to do the arms. I'm just going to bend the wire into the position that I would like. Then we're just gonna add some clay on top of that. And I want his arms to be just as skinny as his legs, so I'm not gonna bulk him out that much. Now once the arms are covered, before we do the hands, I want him to be holding a lantern, so we're just going to make the lantern right now. Just shaped it out in foil, covered it in clay, and shaped it out again, and now we're just adding some more details to it, like so. Then once the lantern's pretty much done, we're just going to shape out the handle for it from some aluminum wire and then insert it into a hole that I poked through the top. Now we're just going to add a final detail to the glass with my pin tool. And there you go. There's his lantern. Now for the next step, we're going to make his hands. Then once the hand that's going to hold the lantern is done, I'm just hooking the lantern on like so to the armature wire and then adding the hand on top of that and shaping it out so that it looks correct. And then he will be wearing gloves, so I just added a nice little texture to it with the textured edge of my sculpting tool. And now we're just adding some cuffs to his coat. And then he's definitely looking more like a groundskeeper right now, but just in case he wants to dig some graves, we're going to give him a shovel. And we're just making that like so using a bamboo skewer widening the top of it and then adding some wrappings like so then we're going to pre-bake this and add it later on then a couple final details adding a wood grain and a nice little notch in the shovel now we're just going to attach his other hand like so and add another arm cuff. Then we're going to add some wrinkles to his arm and then now we're going to start his head. I'm just shaping out the core of his head with some aluminum foil and then we're going to cover that in clay. Now I'm just pressing out his eye sockets with my large ball stylus getting that nice and shaped out, just sort of roughing things with my fingertips and spoon tool, like so. And he is gonna be an old man, but I do want some of his features to be exaggerated, so we're gonna give him a really big chin, like that. Just add a skewer to the back of his head so that I can hold on to that when I'm sculpting it. And then it'll help me attach the head to the body easier if there's already a hole in it. Just detailing the mouth with my explorer tool adding some wrinkles 
And then before I permanently attach the eyes, I'm just gonna deepen the eye sockets with my medium ball stylus, add the eyes, and now we're gonna go in with some lower eyelids, like so, and then just, just add that little snake of clay and shape it out with my spoon tool. Now we're just gonna give him an exaggerated brow bone and make it look like he's raising one eyebrow. Kind of an angry expression, I guess. And then we're just gonna shape that out and then bring out his cheekbones a little bit, like so. Blend that in with my spoon tool. And at this point, I was really happy with how he was turning out. I really didn't make any mistakes with this guy. And I don't know why sometimes it just works out that way, but I got lucky this time. There wasn't too many mess ups. No casualties to be reported. Then once the eyes are done, we're just going to add his nose. And he does kind of look like a witch right now. Well, he looks exactly like a witch right now, but I promise you later on, he doesn't. Just giving him that nose, fixing his mouth, adding some nostrils, some more wrinkles here and there. Then as a final face detail, we're gonna add a little bit of a texture and a single tooth. And now it's time for the ears. This was a very good ear day. I did both ears correctly on the first try. That never happens. And his head is done and I'm very happy with it, but it looks like it's missing something. What could it be? Glasses! We're going to give him some glasses. I'm just going to shape out the frames using some floral wire by wrapping the wire around one of my sculpting tools to get perfect circles. Trimming them to size, and there we go. Glasses look great. Then before we pre-bake his head, we're just going to brush the entire surface with clay softener to remove fingerprints. And then once the head is baked and completely cooled down, it's time to add his hair. And this is just a flat piece of clay that I textured with my pin tool. I'm attaching it to his baked head. Then I realize it works better if I just do it all in one piece. So that's what we're doing here and attaching it. And then if you're wondering to attach the glasses before I baked it, I gently pressed them into the bridge of his nose, just enough for that to hold them in place. Now we're just giving him some sideburns here, finishing off his hair. Then once everything's looking pretty good on his head, we're just going to attach it with some bacon bond and then bake him one last time. And once he's cooled down, it's time for paint. I will be using this assortment of folk art acrylic paints. Then we're gonna start with his skin. The only skin that he has that's showing is his face, head and neck. Then we're just going to darken the eye sockets a little bit. To get the skin tone, I mixed beige with driftwood to get that nice gray tone. And then I darkened it with some pure black to get the darker, paint that I'm heading around his eyes and then after detailing all of the wrinkles and whatnot with some purple I'm going in and adding some rosiness to his nose and chin to kind of bring him to life a little bit more because he's not a zombie he is fully alive now we're just going in and painting his eyes with some warm white and then adding the irises with a very small dotting tool and the color pure black then once that's done, we're just going to paint his frames to his glasses black. And then we're going to go over that with some metallic bronze. And then I realized that I don't like the way the metallic bronze looks, so I just paint it black again. You couldn't really see it when it was bronze. So let's just fix that right now. And then start his hair. I'm starting with a medium tone gray like so, and then we're gonna go over that and dry brush some lighter gray to bring out all the details in it. Then we can't forget that tooth, I'm painting it the color taffy. And then I'm also painting the base color of his shirt taffy as well. I also mixed this with some driftwood just to make it a little grayer and more desaturated. 
Now we're just gonna go in and dirty up his shirt a little bit by adding some dark gray. I created this color just by adding some pure black and driftwood to the color taffy. Just going into all the nooks and crannies and then I'm using dark brown on his coat. And to create this I just used straight up brown mixed with pure black. And then I like the sort of splotchy finish I'm getting from this so I don't go over it again for a second coat. I actually like it, it kind of looks more like leather. Now we're just painting his pants. To create this color I mixed um, boulder with imperial red and yellow bright. Then we're getting that nice orangey pinkish color. Then we're just going to go in with some watered down pure black to heighten all of the nooks and crannies all over his coat and then add some extra details to the bottom and then we're gonna go in and do the same thing to the pants but with just a darker shade of the original red color to create the darker shade I just added a little bit of pure black now we're just painting his gloves black and the handle to his lantern and now we're gonna paint the fence this nice grayish brown color then while the fence is drying we're just gonna go in and paint the lantern to look like it's lit up so painting the glass yellow and then highlighting it with some lighter yellow and then painting all of the metal areas on it black and as you saw there this is much easier to do when it's not dangling from his hand Man, I'm really jumping around here, I apologize. Now I'm just painting the wood on the handle of his shovel and then highlighting the fence with some lighter brown, like so, finishing that off. Then we're going to paint the wrappings on the shovel the color warm white. And then we're gonna go in back to the lantern and add some metallic bronze, slightly brushing that onto all the black areas. Now we're gonna start the grass this dead green looking color was made using what is it grass grass green mixed with driftwood and some yellow and then I just added some more yellow to that to create this nice highlight color that I'm gently dry brushing all over the surface of the grass now we're gonna go in with some driftwood to paint the stones I darkened it a little bit with some pure black just so it's a darker gray Then to add some more dimension, we're just gonna go in with some green that's darker than the base color of the grass to add some shadows here and there. And then I just watered it down a little bit and I'm brushing it over the tops of the stones to sort of antique them. And I'm rubbing off the excess with either my finger or a paper towel. And those came out really cool. Now we're just painting the shovel dark gray and his socks, another shade of gray. Now we're just gonna paint his shoes a very dark gray. What is this, 50 shades of gray? Then we're gonna finish off the shovel with some metallic silver. And then bring out all of the details in his shoes with some lighter gray. Give him back his lantern. And he's done! Our groundskeeper slash grave digger slash whatever the hell you wanna call him is complete. Let me know what you think in the comments.
that's a wrap. I really hope you like how the groundskeeper guy came out. I am so happy with him. He's probably one of my favorite sculptures that I've done so far. And I really like how the base turned out. Let me know how you think I did in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching and being here. We just hit 170,000 subscribers and that's amazing. Thank you so much for that. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and then follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Ace of Clay. And I will see you in the next one.